Hello, calculus fans. All right, so we're going to try to prove that the area of a circle of radius r is pi r squared. Now, this was known to Archimedes a long, long time ago, but Archimedes didn't have the use of calculus, so this is going to be a pretty advanced method of calculation. Now, what we're actually going to do is compute the area of a quarter circle. So let's look at a picture here. So here's a graph of a circle, radius r, centered at the origin. Its equation is given by x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And then we're going to compute this quarter circle's area. Now we can take the equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared. If we solve for y, we get y equals plus or minus square root of r squared minus x squared. Now that plus or minus is actually important. The plus will give you the top half of the circle. The minus will give you the bottom half of the circle. Now, the quarter circle that we're going to try to compute, it's actually the area of the first quadrant region that's under the curve. y equals square root of r squared minus x squared, where x goes between 0 and r. So we're doing the positive half. That gives you the top half of the circle, but we're only going between 0 and r. So that means what we're really doing is evaluating this integral. The integral from 0 to r of square root of r squared minus x squared dx. So what we want to do is we want to make a substitution that's going to turn r squared minus x squared. We're going to turn it into something. So we'll notice that the Pythagorean identity, 1 minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta, this is actually going to be useful for this. We'll see how this works. Now if we note that r squared minus r squared sine squared theta is equal to r squared times 1 minus sine squared theta, just by factoring out the r squared, that's equal to r squared cosine squared theta. So because of that, that actually suggests a substitution. That if we can take the x that we see in here and replace it with r sine theta, then we get this expression, which turns very nicely into r squared cosine squared theta. So now let's go back to our integral. We know that we have the value of x is going to be between 0 and r. And so that means we can make a restriction for theta. Theta is going to be between 0 and pi over 2. Now we've decided that we're going to make x equal to r sine theta. So if we do dx, we'll get r cosine theta d theta. Remember, we're just making a substitution here. OK, so. If we take the square root of r squared minus x squared and make that replacement, and we keep it now this time inside the square root, we end up with square root of r squared cosine squared theta. And of course, the squares get rid of the square root. But you have to be careful with that sort of thing. Now, you're supposed to really have absolute value of r cosine theta. But remember, we made a restriction on theta to say that the value of theta has to be between 0 and pi over 2. So that means that r cosine theta is going to be positive, so we don't need the absolute value. All right, so now we're going to change the variable in our integral. So the r squared minus x squared with the square root turns into r cosine theta. That was from what we had up here. And then the dx turns into r cosine theta d theta. That was up here. We had calculated that previously. And then the limits of integration, that's also based on the substitution that we made. So when x is equal to zero, uh, to 0, then theta will have to be equal to 0. When x is equal to r, then theta has to be equal to pi over 2. So now when we clean that up, we're going to get this expression here, r squared times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine squared theta d theta. The r we can pull out because it's just a constant. It's constant because our variable of integration is theta. All right, so now we're trying to integrate cosine squared. Remember, we have half angle formulas for this. Here was the half angle formula. Cosine squared theta is equal to 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. 
So we're going to replace our integrand with 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. All right, so let's see what we get. A equals r squared times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine squared theta d theta. When we replace the integrand using our half angle formula, now we get r squared times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 half 1 plus cosine 2 theta d theta. We'll pull the 1 half out. And now we can just write down an antiderivative. So if we write down an antiderivative of 1 plus cosine 2 theta, it'll be theta plus 1 half sine of 2 theta. And now we're evaluating this from 0 to pi over 2. If you notice, if you plug in 0 into this, you'll get nothing. So all you have to do is plug in pi over 2. And if you work it all out, then you're just going to end up with pi over 2 for the, uh, just for the integral. And so that ends up being 1 quarter pi r squared. But that's what we wanted. We com we're computing the area of a quarter circle, so this actually proves that the area of the full circle is pi r squared. Also note that our step where we computed an antiderivative, we managed to do this without making a substitution. I think we're at the point now where we should be able to compute antiderivatives of things like cosine 2 theta without too much work. Okay, that's all for now.